Hello, uh, my name is uh, Kunio Yoshika. I'm a professor of the uh, uh, Department of Environmental Science and Technology. Our laboratory is uh, conducting a research on uh, resource production uh, from uh, unutilized uh, biomass or wastes. So this presentation uh, will uh, show you the uh, overview of our R&D activities. Uh, this uh, video has been taken at the uh, symposium which was held uh, recently in Hatsushima Island uh, in Japan. And uh, at that symposium, uh, three countries, China, Korea and Japanese scientists are jointly uh, make a presentation. And so uh, every year we will have this symposium in Ch Japan, China and Korea. So please enjoy my presentation. Okay, so the, uh, finally uh, I will introduce uh, our activities here. And uh, uh, so uh, I will uh, briefly show you the presentations uh, to be conducted by our students. But our focus is at the uh, Raw material is unutilized resources uh, such as biomass and the wastes and uh, uh, how we can convert these uh, raw feedstocks into coal-like solid fuel, natural gas like gases fuel or petroleum like liquid fuel, hydrogen and electricity is our main focus. So we have uh, 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 more than 30 students and you can see uh, roughly one third is Japanese and one third is Chinese and others are uh, many many countries we have a uh, good number of foreign students so the uh, first topic is the solid fuel uh, production so today uh, we will have three presenters uh, one is uh, mr kim uh, from korea a fuel production from mvt residue of korean msw employee and the other two uh, so uh, mr by indiron also is a doctor course student and one uh, chinese master course student on this topic so the uh, first topic is MSW treatment, means solid waste. So the, this is the operating principle of our hydrothermal treatment facility. Uh, we have a reactor, high pressure vessel reactor. And this is a raw material, everything can be uh, put into the uh, reactor, no segregation is required. And we supply roughly 200 degrees C to megapascal, mega saturated steam inside, and the only one hour is enough to finish the reaction. Then we will extract the steam, and uh, uh, the steam should be condensed and water-treated, and maybe fed back to the uh, feed water of the water. This is a closed system of the water. Then we extract the product, so you can see the big difference of this raw material and the uh, finished product. And the uh, moisture content is almost the same, but uh, it shows a very good drying performance, maybe natural drying or just air drying is enough to get the uh, dry product uh, whose moisture content is roughly 10%. And the uh, energy balance of the system is uh, something like that. Uh, the roughly one quarter, 25% uh, of this fuel will be utilized in the boiler to produce steam, and the uh, rest, uh, three quarters, can be utilized in the furnace, boiler, or a semi uh, Our main target is to co firing with coal uh, of this new material. So we have a commercial plant in Japan, in Hokkaido. Its uh, hospital waste is treated every day. So the, this is the appearance change uh, by employing this technology. Uh, this is a raw MSW, everything in it. And the pressure uh, temperature is not so high enough. Uh, something left uh, here. But if we increase a little bit more high pressure, uh, pressure, then uh, you can see most of the material has become powder, uh, like a material, and very it, it, it is very easy to dry. And our target is the uh, one of the target is the cement kiln application. So the, uh, this material is very similar to the pulverized coal. So we put this treated MSW together with the coal. This is a pulverizer to supply to the main burner of the cement kiln. But the main uh, program associated with this uh, uh, MSW application for co-firing with coal is the chlorine content. So a uh, very interesting feature uh, of this technology is 
We can also control the Crowline uh, component uh, inside of the MSW. This is a raw MSW. Uh, roughly two thirds of the Crowline is coming from organic Crowline. It means PVC. And the uh, rest uh, one th uh, th third is in, in organic Crowline. This is essentially a salt. But uh, if we increase the pressure or if we increase the uh, reaction time, then you can see major part of this organic chlorine will become in organic chlorine. So uh, uh, it means uh, this organic chlorine can be easily removed by water washing. So uh, the, uh, this is the uh, result of the uh, Mr. Indron, uh, by Indron. So he will make a presentation on this uh, result uh, today, this afternoon. But uh, a, a very reasonable uh, water washing is enough to get a very small amount of uh, chlorine content. So it means uh, this technology can produce uh, chlorine free and also the raw material of the MSW contains a very less uh, sulfur. So sulfur free, chlorine free, new uh, solid fuel can be produced using this technology. And if we apply this technology to the high moisture content biomass, like sludge or animal manure, uh, different things will happen. So, uh, and this is an uh, example of the sludge, uh, water content is 80%, and uh, it is very difficult. This is a um, maximum water content we can obtain uh, using the dehydration process. But uh, after uh, finishing the hydrothermal treatment, the products, the water content is a little bit higher, but uh, this shows a very good uh, dehydration performance and mechanical dehydration is possible to have uh, water content less than 60%. And this uh, product shows very good uh, drying performance. And uh, we have also a separated water here. And one interesting feature is that, uh, you know, in uh, sludge there is a lot of uh, nutrient uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And now, nowadays, the potassium and, and phosphorus resource is very, very high demand all over the world uh, due to the high uh, rise of the price. So that we can recover uh, this uh, nutrient to this separated water side. But one of the major problems associated with the uh, sludge for the usage of the fertilizer is heavy metal content. Uh, but major part of the heavy metal will be left here in this uh, solid side. So this can be burned together with coal, and this can be utilized as a fertilizer. So the main mechanism of this uh, phenomena is, uh, this is before treatment, most of the water is bounded water, but uh, after treat conducting hydrothermal treatment, uh, the cells will be crushed, and the uh, bounded water will become free water. That's why we have a high uh, performance of the drying and dehydration. So uh, this technology uh, has been commercialized in uh, China. Uh, one of my Chinese students is the uh, key person in this company. Uh, uh, they are building uh, 100 tons per day a plant for uh, sort of treatment by use of the hydrothermal treatment. Uh, it is under construction in, in Mongolia, Fuhat city. And this is the uh, uh, main reactor. They will install three reactors. And uh, this is a coal-fired boiler. So uh, uh, produced fuel can be burned together with coal here. And this is a dehydrate of uh, solid and liquid separation. And uh, their preliminary testing showed that just uh, this uh, solid, uh, separation uh, can realize the uh, solid residue uh, whose moisture content is only 35%. It's amazing, uh, starting from the 80% moisture content and down to 35% moisture content can be uh, achieved. So the next topic is a fair, a liquid fair approach. So uh, one technology we will introduce today is emergent fair production, and uh, Mr. Yamamuro uh, will uh, make a presentation today on this te technology. Uh, this is uh, uh, this technology is very simple. This is just oil and water mixture. Uh, there is an uh, injector and mix oil and water, and there is an inline mixer to produce emergent fuel. Uh, in this emergent fuel, a uh, very uh, minute uh, water droplet is uh, existent in the uh, oil droplet. 
And this is the operating principle of the technology. Uh, so this is the oil droplet. Inside there is a water droplet. And once this oil droplet goes into the burner, uh, there is a, a rapid evaporation of the wa uh, water. As a result, uh, the droplet will become very small oil droplet. It, so compared with this uh, relatively large droplet, which is uh, achievable by mechanical uh, atomizing, uh, but this is a very small uh, particle, so uh, much easier to burn. So as a result, so that uh, dust, especially soot formation, is dramatically reduced. And uh, in the course of the evaporation of the water, there is a temperature drop. It means thermal mass can be also reduced. Uh, but interesting finding that is that the energy saving is also possible uh, because uh, uh, this is the water content and this is the excess air ratio of the combustion and this is thermal efficiency in the boiler boiler, boiler application. And normally uh, the uh, oil, 100% uh, percentage oil is utilized and the excess air ratio should be around here. If we reduce uh, the air amount, uh, there is a big uh, smoke is coming. So uh, normally the plant is operated around here. But by just adding 10% water, we can shift the operating point from here to the point to here. Uh, less uh, excess air ratio is possible. It means highway efficiency is possible just adding water. So we have uh, commercialized this technology in Hokkaido, Japan. Uh, this is a SPA facility. And uh, this is an uh, amount of supplied water. And this is uh, consumption of heavy oil A per ton of hot water. And uh, this is an uh, original heavy oil A case. And this is an emulsified fair case. And in this plant has been commercially operated for more than three years. Uh, no, no human being attendant. And you can see this is a long-term demonstration. Roughly 10% energy saving has been uh, demonstrated. So uh, the uh, big founding is that, the, is that the inner surface of the uh, water is very clean uh, due to the clean uh, combustion of the uh, oil. So uh, uh, we have uh, going to shift to this uh, transfer this technology to Thailand. And uh, Mr. Yamamoto will uh, explain you about the result of the, uh, our Thailand experiment. And the uh, second topic is the biodiesel fuel production, and two presenters uh, we'll have today. And the main idea is, uh, this is a main uh, biodiesel production uh, reaction. Uh, this is a transesterification reaction. This is a raw oil, a triglyceride, plus methanol, three moles of methanol will produce a flame. This is biodiesel plus glycerol. And there are theoretically only three mole of methanol is required, but the real plant uh, mostly much uh, methanol is required. For example, uh, six mole of methanol is required, and relatively high concentration of catalyst, uh, it, it's alkaline catalyst, it's utilized, and uh, relatively higher temperatures is required. So our idea is that I'm explaining about the emergent pure technology. So this is an emulsion for water, but we can adopt this technology to the methanol. So uh, if we mix uh, emulsified methanol with raw oil, uh, we can have this very uniform uh, reaction field. Uh, the, uh, a very small droplet of methanol is dispersed in oil in, uh, very uniformly. So uh, this is a conventional mechanical uh, mixing uh, to oil and methanol, but this is a much better uh, uh, mixing method. So uh, we uh, conducted the conventional mechanical stirring method, and this is uh, emulsification mix mixing. And some results shows that uh, this case is uh, uh, this reaction time, and this is the uh, catalyst concentration, and this is in the case of the methanol uh, percentage, fourteen uh, percent. And you can see much faster, uh, almost in, uh, suddenly uh, finish the reaction of this uh, production uh, rate, uh, production uh, of the uh, biodiesel. So a uh, detailed uh, result will be presented by two students today. OK, so the final uh, topic today is the gases fuel production. And we have uh, totally five uh, presentations by our students. and. Uh, uh, there are many, many new ideas coming from. So uh, uh, from his, uh, Mr. Sun's work, uh, he's challenging for the uh, e-waste gasification using the modern carbonate uh, technology. 
And uh, Mr. Inoue is uh, trying to do the uh, plastic uh, gasification using two-stage gasification concept employing uh, ruthenium catalyst. And uh, also Mr. Bayou is uh, challenging the CO2 gasification of biomass. And uh, Mr. Ashino and uh, Ms. Chen uh, is trying to remove tar uh, by use of the adsorption or absorption uh, technologies. So this is the concept of the, uh, Mr. Chan's work. Uh, uh, we have a molten carbonate uh, bed here, and we supply uh, e-waste here, and then uh, we supply steam here. This is essentially a, a steam uh, gasification process, and as a result, we have fuel, fuel oil, and uh, also oh, this uh, uh, environmental pollutants can be uh, removed by this reaction with this carbonate, and also we can, we can recover metal here. And uh, this is the result. Uh, this is a carbonate absence. Uh, very few gases coming, but uh, this carbonate existence uh, significantly uh, promotes the gasification process with the same temperature. And this is the two-stage gasification for plastic uh, process. Uh, we have a pyrolyzer and a pyrolysis. We have a raw material plastic here, and first we pyrolyze it, and this pyrolyzed gas will be uh, converted to the reformer where we utilize the uh, ruthenium catalyst. Steam reforming will be done here uh, to uh, finally get the fuel, fuel gas for, for example, a fuel cell SOFC operations. So this is the one result. Uh, uh, this is the temperature. Uh, using this catalyst, uh, we can effectively uh, have a high uh, gasification conversion, uh, carbon conversion up to almost 100% with the relative low, tem low temperature around uh, 650. And uh, this is a tar removal a project uh, targeted for Swiss Lodge. And uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, methods for chemical methods or physical methods, and uh, we are trying this scrubber uh, or uh, absorber. Uh, and this is one result by Ms. Chen. Uh, in the case of uh, sludge gasification, a lot of nitrogen content uh, met, uh, tar will be produced. And uh, we have measured the, uh, we uh, compare the uh, no scrubber case, uh, wa uh, water case, uh, biodiesel scrubbing, diesel oil scrubbing, cooking oil scrubbing. Uh, then uh, the best result is that we got uh, cooking oil is the best uh, absorbent of these uh, tar components. So uh, I think this is the end. So the uh, detailed presentation will be done uh, this afternoon by our students. Thank you very much.